What's up, guys? My name is Froshi, a professional Tier 1 Rainbow Six coach. And today we're going to be talking about how you can play Fenrir. Let's get into it. Let's get straight into it with Fenrir's loadout. We have uh, the first two options are really, really easy. You're going to be wanting to go with the MP7 over the shotgun. The automatic SMG is a pretty good one. Uh, and it's going to be a lot more versatile than just a shotgun. I don't really see anyone ever using the SSG-12. I think the MP7 is much better. In terms of attachments to the MP7, uh, I believe Flash Hider is the best for the barrel. But at the end of the day, it is whatever is easiest for you to control. Uh, so if you want to experiment, be my guest. I'll just avoid suppressor and extended barrel. For the pistol, again, it's really easy. You're always going to want to go with the shotgun option over a pistol option for any operator. Uh, and he's got the Bailiff 410. Not the best for making holes, but you can make a couple. And it is still more versatile than the 5.7. So, again, very easy. I wouldn't use the laser pointer on this. Just stick it normally. And then for the option of bulletproof camera or barbed wire, 99% of the time I'm going bulletproof camera because of the nature of Fender's gadget. It doesn't really, you know, it makes it to where you probably don't need to bring the barbed wire. The only reason you bring the barbed wire on Fender is if your team had no other passive intel at all and you need a barbed wire somewhere else. Um, but I find myself most of the time running the bulletproof camera. All right, so let's get into right away some examples and break down how we should be playing Fenrir. So let's get straight into it. Uh, let's do a basic breakdown of Fenrir's gadget for those who don't know. He's got five of these dread mines that he can place down and then he can activate and deactivate three of these, or he can activate three of these dread mines uh, at a time. I'm just going to throw these around for example purposes. So if he has more than, you know, he gets five, but he only gets to activate three. If he wants to get that activation back. So for example, if I activate this mine, you'll see on the bottom right, I now have two out of three activations, uh, which means I can still activate two more. But then if I go ahead and I deactivate it, I have to look at it to activate and deactivate it. I get that activation back. Um, and essentially what these do is they're going to near sight anyone that goes uh, near them. They're going to make a audible noise you're going to be able to hear when they're when they come off you're going to get a notification on your screen um if you see to my left uh you'll see the one that i have placed comes up all of them that i have placed will come up on the left um and say where so not only will i get an audible noise not only will the person be debilitated but i will actually get a notification that little marker will turn red as well um and essentially these traps are really really strong they pretty much make it impossible for anyone to hear or see. Um, they can really only see what's close by to them, and it doesn't uh, go away until the person destroys the gadget. So you have to find the gadget uh, while they're stuck in it, um, and it's really, really annoying. And I've seen some discourse online about how Fenrir should be played in general. Um, this guy is a lurker, so he's not a deep roamer. He's not a sight player either you're going to be wanting to play him close to the site but not necessarily on the site or on a deep roam does that mean you can't roam with him or you can't anchor with him no it doesn't mean that but his utility is not enhanced um to roaming or anchoring such as like smoke for example you're going to want to anchor with him to get the most out of his gadget or mira or like mozzie or oryx you're going to want to roam with them to get the most out of their gadget fender is somewhere in the middle and so we can get a grasp of that let's get into an example i love playing Fenrir on kitchen so the general setup i'll go for i like getting one on this window i like getting one sometimes it'll depend sometimes i'll put one uh further into uh server sometimes i'll put one on this door a lot of time i'll put one into service and then again same thing i can go deep into bathroom or i can go on this door usually i go like this um and then i have some options a lot of the time i'll just throw this one here for the Throw away later, late round, and then depends on how I want to play with this last one. So there's three spots that I can play uh, Fenrir in. So I can play him in Sunrise. If I'm going to play him in Sunrise, I'll put the Fenrir gadget either. Um, you can hide it here and make it really annoying for anyone uh, coming by. I can play it on the door. Um, or I can play in Lobby. For example, I can play in Lobby or in Office. And I can have one for this double door or for my uh, stairs. Usually just a double door. Or I can actually even go play upstairs, support my team. This is something I'd usually rotate to if I wanted to play Fenrir. Um, I can play in like hookah, start in base. My team wants to hold VIP. I can put a Fenrir charge for my roamers. I can even get a, a third one. Uh, or a second one for their own uh, off a site. Just sort of depends on how I want to play. I can throw in here. It all just 
you know, the way you want to spread your gadgets around really depends on how aggressive you want to play, uh, what your team needs, things like that, which is what makes Fenrir so good. A lot of the time, I find myself playing in Sunrise, though, and just using the Fenrir charge here. Um, I like this one because I'll activate it. It'll sort of notify me if anyone walks in. It'll be really annoying for anyone who walks in. And then the ones I'll have activated will be this one and this one. And then let's say I fall off of Sunrise. I'll deactivate this and I'll make sure I have this bathroom one activated. And that's sort of the general way of how I'd play it uh, on uh, this site in particular you can see again i could as always just move this this is probably the most flexible one if i wanted to like move one over to hookah that'd be really strong it all just sort of depends um and i could have like this hookah one activated while i'm in sunrise so i know if anyone's coming above me or if i have roamers in vip and help them out there's a lot of ways i can sort of play fender that's why i say it's important that you sort of lurk with him play close by to the site but you want to be able to support anywhere your team needs and you want to know what gadgets to activate and deactivate um, the thing I like about Fenrir the most is there's a really, uh, high floor with him. So anyone can sort of pick him up and, and play him well, but then the ones who are really good at Fenrir and know how to rotate with him, know how to work his gadget really well, uh, are going to be in a good spot as well. Um, cause there's a, there's a super high ceiling with him. So that does it for this specific example. Let's go on to border and get on another example. Here we are on Border Defending Workshop for another example on how I like to play Fenrir and just so uh, we can sort of further understand his play style. So if I'm Defending Workshop, I'll place one Fenrir gadget uh, for this events walk-in. I will place one for the jail walk-in. I could always place it like deeper here as well. It just sort of depends. And then I don't know why I took the long way, but... I'll also place one right under this default cam. And you can always get creative with the spots. You probably can find a good spot or under this desk. Or you can place it for bathroom. Not bathroom, sorry. You can place it for archives. Or you can place it for bathroom as well. You can always get really creative. That'll be my three, like, let's say, default ones on the site. Then I'll head upstairs. And then I'm for sure going to place one on this doorway. And then this fourth one is, again, really, really flexible. Um... I could place one on this hall or I can place one for the break walk-in. I could even find another spot on the site as well. Um, and in general, you know, I can, again, sort of play anywhere. So I have the shotgun with Fenrir, so I can make holes above the window. I can make sure these walls are reinforced. You don't have to have this wall reinforced. just like a general setup thing. But... Um, that's I think if you're a newer player, it's probably just better to just have these two walls reinforced, um, especially for solo queuing, because you might not always have the support that you need. Um, but Fenrir Shotgun makes them really flexible because I can obviously play the holes from below. Another spot I like to play in, I'll find myself playing uh, in this spot a lot with a lot of operators. I just like playing in here. Is Customs. Um, Customs is another like lurky spot I can play. As well, if I were to play in customs, I would just make sure I've got uh, this activated, this activated, and then I'll always have that one above activated for my roamers uh, above. And again, this fourth one, you can really do whatever you want with. You can put it on the site. You can put it um, to further help you for your roam. You can put it here. Just for example, you can put it here. You can put it on the window if you want. You can put it uh, for this door. I like this one a lot because this one's really annoying for anyone dropping the hatch as well if they don't see it. You could get uh, this. If, if maybe if you're roaming here alone, like if you don't have any support here at all, you're just trying to hold the top floor as much as you can. It might be smart to put one here or even uh, deeper into fountain um, like uh, up here. Probably wouldn't reach actually up there, but probably just like around this wall um this sort of depends so if you want to roam in customs you can probably put one on the site if you're roaming here above it might be smart to put one in break or in office but again that shows you the flexibility of Fenrir. i really have so many options and so many spots i can play in um the really important thing is um understanding my situation like again if i'm solo queuing i might want to put some more intel for myself if i'm duo or trio queuing maybe just focus more on the site or things like that um, understanding where I'm playing and where the enemy is coming from so I know what activate, what gadgets to activate and deactivate. Because obviously, right, if I fall off, I don't need this activated anymore. I can fall off and then at like late round. So this is like, for example, that's an early round Fenrir charge. 
this is a late round Fenrir charge, right? I'm not gonna have this activated right away. This is one that's specifically set up for the execute. Uh, same thing, if I were to place one here, this would be an example of a late round Fenrir charge. Um, another thing I forgot to mention in the general breakdown is if one of these gadgets gets shot while it's activated, you don't get the activation charge back. So if one of your early round Fenrirs gets shot, you're not gonna get the activation back, but that's fine. It's usually, that means it's done its job. So um, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Just, you have to be careful. You don't want uh, random Fenrirs activated um, and you'll lose the charge. Uh, and another thing quickly, uh, some counters to Fenrir, um, Brava, Twitch, uh, Thatcher, things like that. Um, important to understand that if Brava hacks your gadget while it's activated, then it'll activate against your defense, against your teammates. If Brava hacks your gadget while it's deactivated, then it'll just destroy the gadget. And sort of the, the difference is, this is what it looks like deactivated. It's bulletproof, by the way, when it's deactivated, which again, I probably should have mentioned earlier in the video. It's bulletproof when it's deactivated. But if I, let me get a charge back. If I de, if I activate this, uh, if it'll let me, here we go. It opens up and it makes it shootable. So that's something to understand as well. Um, when it's not activated, it's bulletproof. When it's activated, you can shoot it. Uh, let's move on to an example on bank to close out the video. On to our final example here with Fenrir, just to sort of get a better idea of how he should be played. We're defending open area on bank here. So just to get started, we're really, again, we're just focusing on the gadgets and where we're playing, not necessarily like holes and stuff um, for the site. But the first one we're going to be going with on the printer window, you could always just really quick, you could always um, like place it deeper here. Sometimes that's better actually. Um, but either works. You can even place it really deep, like right here. It really just depends. <clears throat> Next one, you're definitely going to place one on this door. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's the main entryway into the site. Again, same thing. You can place one deeper if you want. That also works. Um, you could really get creative with the spots that you use these in. Next one, you're going to want to have one on this hat drop. You're definitely not just going to want to place it like in the middle. They'll shoot that or, or identify it. You're going to want to place it in a spot where they'll see it, but not until after they drop. This is probably a good one just sort of hidden in here. Or even uh, even better, if you can just get it deeper. Because players like to uh, plant in this area. So you want them to hit that Fenrir charge. So let me, I'm pretty sure there's a way you can get it. Yeah, like even deeper like that. Um, and that's going to be a real pain in the ass for anyone trying to drop the hash i don't know why i picked that up because i want that to stay there um then the next one is you're going to want to place one on this uh double door into the hallway now there's two main spots i'm going to play as fenrir kind of three the first one is going to be in tellers and archives this one is really strong because I'm uh, close to the site. I could even make like a rotate here if I want. I'm too lazy to actually fully make it. That was a shitty attempt, but you know what I mean? Again, and always you're gonna have a rotate here as well. Um, and if I were to do it this way, I probably, I could place a Fenrir charge uh, here on that door. I could place a Fenrir charge for this door. I could place a Fenrir charge for my ATMs. If I want to get crazy, I could place one like right here on this door or even on the close door here. I fat fingered that one. So there's options there. And I like to play here a lot because again, I'm close by to the site. I can easily rotate up or down. I have two options. I can get back to the site. I can get back into this hallway. I can um, flank uh, up to uh, blue stairs right if obviously just again some general map knowledge here a really good flank you can do on this map is going down these main stairs and uh, <clears throat> and going up these stairs and you're going to be able to stop anyone like if they're trying to monty plant here this is really strong to stop that this is that's a really good late round position uh another spot i like to play sometimes is fenrir again it sort of depends on what i'm feeling or where my teammates are if i'm queued with someone some other spots, you can place one uh, here to get really crazy and really aggressive. You can place one for janitor. You can place one for stock. You can place one for the stock hop in. You can, uh, the spot I'll actually usually play is like around conference or E3. Uh, probably like around this vending machine and then drop off just somewhere, just like a general light lurk to start. And then I'd probably be falling off here pretty early and going to play uh, these main stairs. There are some general spots, um, but again, in most cases, I'll probably just uh, I'll probably just place it here or janitor. Um, just make it really annoying. 
Janitor is probably better. Can, can I pick this up? Janitor is probably even better uh, if I have roamers uh, as well, other than myself. Uh, the stock hop in as well is probably pretty strong. And then if I were to start here, the ones that I've activated are this janitor one, this one on kitchen. And uh, I have options here. So I can either have uh, this one activated or I can have uh, this one activated, the printer one. The open area one, so as I was uh, explaining last time, this one is a late round Fenrir. The Fenrir upstairs is an early round Fenrir. This uh, Fenrir charge is probably going to be activated the whole round, unless I have Intel, especially if this uh, default cam gets shot. This one's probably up the whole round. That double door one's up the whole round. Um, and ideally, later on, I'm probably going to have to make a decision on what I want to do. Do I want to deactivate one of these to get the printer one up? Sort of just all depends. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. As well as thank you for getting the Solus video up to 2,000 views. I really appreciate that. That is a lot of views to me, so thank you a ton. If you did learn something, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe, especially if you're new. As well as I do read every comment. Uh, I try and like and respond to every comment as well. So yeah, have a great day, guys.